with another video for Red Devil Studio. This is pre-recorded, by the way, so this will be going live um, Sunday evening time. Um, but this is hopefully going to be um, a weekly um, a weekly uh, show, basically, um, where we basically do a, like a, a, the the top ten players for United from the following week. Um, so it's going to be called Top Ten United. Top Ten United players weekly, um, where we basically do a countdown on the top ten players for Manchester United during the following, um, basically during the week. Um, obviously, get involved in the comments, like the vid if you're new to the channel, like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter, United X, and smash that notification button for latest Manchester United news. So yes, this base, this new format, this new show, Top Ten United players weekly. We're going to count down basically the top 10 best performers for Manchester United um, from the following week. Um, or up until this point, this this episode in particular is just going to be up until this point. Obviously, the Chelsea game hasn't happened as of yet. Um, by the time this goes live, the Chelsea game will still probably not have happened. Um, but the main thing with, with it is that we want to, I want to get you guys involved, the community involved. Nominate, obviously, the players who you feel... Um, should actually get into the top 10 list as well and, and we'll obviously have a discussion about it um and feel free to disagree maybe you disagree on what i think i believe are the top 10 manchester united players um but let me know so anyway without further ado let's actually get into into the list right now so it's counting down from 10 to obviously first place so at number 10 it's david de gea um david de gea is still a good keeper he is still a good keeper, in my opinion. Um, he comes on this list, and, I, and, I, and I'll say this, guys. There is not a lot to choose from, to be honest, you know, um, given how many injuries we have and the, the United team's performance over this season. So, um, you know, forgive me if you disagree with people on this list, but the reality is that, like, there are not that many Manchester United players to choose from. It is what it is. So De Gea, in my opinion, comes in, in 10. He has been a bit shaky this season. I think everyone sort of agrees with that. But at the same time, he has made some very good saves for us um, over the last few months, two weeks or so. So um, I don't think anyone can disagree with the fact that him being our number one um, is not a bad idea by any stretch of imagination. Um, and he is one of our better players at the end of the day. You know, he while he has dropped the ball sometimes, consistent, his consistency hasn't completely dropped to the fact that I, I believe that he needs to be dropped. Um, especially now that he's sort of gotten a bit more confident and starting to pick up his form. So right now, David De Gea at number 10, I think is very, very reasonable. If anyone has to say, say about that, let me know in the comments. At number 9 is is probably a surprise for people, and it's Sergio Romero. So even though I did say that um, David De Gea, you know, shouldn't be dropped, you know, he's obviously a number one keeper, doing well. The reality for me, and I know a lot of people aren't going to mention Sergio Romero, is that when Sergio Romero has played, and we've obviously seen him in the Europa League and the FA Cup, etc., when he's come in um, in performance, he he's done well. He's done well. There's no doubt about it. Like he's done what he's had. He's rarely had any errors or mistakes. And Romero is by far the best backup keeper in the Premier League. You know, he is. He is. He is. We are lucky to have, in my opinion, such a good quality goalkeeper in Sergio Romero as backup. And honestly, as I've said to a lot of people. With the whole, um, or oh, what happens if De Gea stays or stores the contract, etc. United are blessed with keepers. You know, we've got Sergio Ramos as a good sec second choice, um, and now, and we now we have Dean Henderson as well known at Sheffield United. So United have um, enough go goalkeepers, you know, to compensate for lack of David De Gea. And right now, I argue, based on Sergio Romero's appearances, that Sergio Romero um, is probably the better keeper. Um, I say that loosely because obviously Sergio Romero hasn't played as many games as David De Gea and of course um, Sergio Romero in a Premier League game could easily, um, he could easily um, have, um, have said, right, okay, you know what, um, uh, you know, what am I trying to say here? Basically what I'm saying is Sergio Romero could, uh, could, e could easily have left the club, uh, gone, and completely um, said, so I don't want to be second choice. And he wouldn't be, he'd be well within his rights to do so, just given the fact that um, on form, at least right now, like he's he's doing okay, you know. So, and he's, there is a shout that he should get more game time, he should get more of an appearance. So, that's my take on Sergio Romero, guys. Let me know what you think in, in the comments as well. But Sergio Romero at number nine, 
based on his performances for Manchester United. Okay, they have been consistently good um, and fair play to him. Right, moving on to number eight, Matic. Um, I know a lot of people go like, status Matic, what has Matic done? Blah, 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 blah. Um, but to be fair to Matic, in the last couple of weeks, Matic actually has improved a lot. He's improved a lot um, and he's and he's really um, come in his stride, you know. So he's done... Um, He's done the job that's required of him. He's basically key to our defensive midfield situation, especially with the injuries to McTominay, um, Pogba and the like. Um, having played a few games on trot, he has started to... He still, he, still, he still passes sideways from time to time. He's still obviously slow. But in terms of providing a bit of stability, a bit of oomph in that squad, Matic is basically doing his job, you know. So now <coughs> he might drop out of this list after the Chelsea game. And obviously, we'll do another episode next week uh, where we talk with you about these um, plays you never know Matic may drop out of the top 10 depending on performance um, but so far for me I think Matic at number eight um, I think is a fairly reasonable position given his his, his performances um, recently moving on to number seven right Lindelof 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 now Personally, for me, um, I think Lindelof, at least in, in the last couple of um, last couple of games, has been relatively solid. I feel that Maguire, um, who spoilers is not on this list, um, I feel that he um, Lindelof has actually been the better defender, in my opinion. You know, so especially given how much we paid for Harry Maguire, um, yes, Lindelof is not good in the air. We know that, and certainly in the beginning of the season, he. Um, he he was just he could he he, 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 he he can't win the ball in there he can't you know so and, that, and that's his flaw, um, but in terms of his positioning, um, recently his positioning has been better. I don't think there's any doubt about that, um, and I think that Ham Maguire um, needs needs to come sweet because certainly the goals we conceded, um, Ham Maguire you could argue has been more at fault, um, and being our captain, being our leader, um, in quote leader. Um, he, he bears more responsibility for the defending. And so far, for me, as I've said several times, I just can't see this Lindelof and Hammaguire partnership working. Lindelof and Smalling last season was, was, was better than what we were seeing, con considering that we conceded less goals. Lindelof and um, Bailly, I could see work, you know, so but Lindelof and Maguire, um, it's just not working right now. So, But so far, at least in the last couple of weeks, I'd say that uh, Lindelof has been our better defender, and that's why he is number seven on this list. Moving on to number six, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw is not without his critics. There are lots of people that despise Luke Shaw. They're not United fans, um, and I think that's misplaced. Luke Shaw um, has struggled, especially with injuries uh, and the like. Um, but since coming back, um, I think in the last couple of weeks, again, this is based on the last couple of weeks, by the way, obviously, Things can change come the Chelsea game. But for me, um, Luke Shaw, um, in the last couple of weeks, has improved. You know, certainly on that left side. Him and I think maybe it might be because of, obviously, a, a, another player we'll talk about um, on this list. And maybe the, that competition his sort of, you know, the fact that, you know, there's always an argument that, you know, this is why competition is good. You know, because, um, you know... Because when you have competition, there's an element of there's a, there's a drive, there's a motivation to improve, etc., etc. Um, and the problem I think that a lot of Manchester United players has is that the reality is there's not really that much um, competition in the Manchester United squad. You know, a lot of players like Lingards and Mashwoods and Martials and all the rest of it, um, they their their spots in the team under Oli Gunnar Solskjaer are secure. And, and so as a result, is there any real uh, desire? Or any real motivation to get better, you know. When Mourinho was at Manchester United, uh, um, Rashford and Martial were competing for the same spot. You know, that's what was happening, um, and they got better, in my opinion, as a result of it. So, essentially, what I'm saying is that I think, and the person we name will come to shortly. Um, I think his presence has probably done a number on Shaw, and has caused Shaw to improve. I think certainly. Um, I think certainly defensively, Shaw is better than the person we'll talk about um, in the future. And going forward, I think all around, Luke Shaw 
Um, Luke Shaw has improved going forward and has improved defensively since it's since it's come back and it's been a vital part of a squad and especially as we're going now into the latter stages of the season and um, when we need that squad depth it's vital to have a player like Luke Shaw in our squad so that is why he's, he's, he's on this list number five uh, so the person the spoiler Brandon Williams Brandon Williams Brandon Williams is ahead of Luke Shaw now why is Brandon Williams ahead of Luke Shaw now Brandon Williams taking this um, fifth spot um I think there's not that much in Brandon Williams and Luke Shaw at this moment in time. But I think the key thing and why Brandon Williams takes a, takes a spot over Shaw, in my opinion, is is just where he's come from. You know, 19-year-old kid, straight from Youth Academy. Um, and unlike some of the other maybe United Academy grad, uh, Academy players, he's really taken his chance. He's taken his chance. He's, he's passionate. He's enthusiastic. He really... Um, he plays for the badge. And I remember especially seeing him play against Liverpool um, and um, was, it, was it Liverpool? Was it Burnley? I think there were a few, other, a few teams where he literally was just like, I think it was City, I think. Yeah, City and Carabao Cup, I think. And he was just like, listen, I'm just just, just bodying to see his fullbacks times because he was just like, I'm playing for the badge. And, that, and, that's, and that's what we want to see as Manchester United fans. He's obviously quick going forward. He can deliver a good ball. Um, uh, more so, I would argue, than obviously Anwar Bissaka, although that's improved. Um, he's just come a long way, to be honest, and he can only get better. And I think with the right coaching, Brandon Williams could be, you know, a left back. I mean, the reality is that I think United were, you know, there's a lot of fans who are saying, well, you know what, maybe we should be in for another another left back. Um, but the reality is, um, is that with Brandon Williams you know, turning up on the scene, you know, is there a need to really sign another left back, especially if Shaw stays fit? I think that's one area that we've got, uh, we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got nailed down. So fifth place goes to Brandon Williams. Let me know if you agree. Fourth place, Marcus Rashford. Now I know Marcus Rashford is injured, but obviously only injured recently. Um, he won't, he won't be. Um, well, he might be, depending on how bad Manchester United players play. Marcus Rashford might be still going based on his perform on his performances. Um, he might still be in the top 10, although he just might get um, further and further down this list, you know. So this is the thing about this list, guys. It's interchangeable. So certain players you'll see may go up the list, may go down the list based on weekly performance. So, like I said, let me know what you guys guys, guys think um, in the comments. Um, so Marcus Vasher, despite the fact that he has been, um, you know, he's been, um, he's been injured and... Um, before he was injured anyway, um, injured recently, um, he was in one of our most informed players, you know. So, and you can see now that Marcus Vasher is now not in the team, that our goal drought was dried up. We were desperate. That's why we signed Agalo, obviously. And hopefully, fingers crossed, Agalo makes it onto this at some point. But you can see the fact that because because of a lack um, of of of, uh, of 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 attacking input that Marcus Rashford gave, especially linked up with Anti Martial, um, you know, our goal threat is just it's just gone. It's just non-existent. It is not not there, um, and we miss Marcus Rashford. It's really as simple as that. Like I mean, at the start midway through the season when Martial was out, um, him playing as a number nine, I think he struggled, um, and I think a lot Marcus has got a lot of criticism for that. I think I think Marcus Rashford and Martial both need each other. Um, no doubt about it, but you can certainly see that Val Marcus Vashon aside, he is he is definitely um, he is definitely um, you know he definitely definitely we definitely definitely miss him. It's as simple as that. We definitely 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 miss him, and that is just um, that's just that's just a fact, really. That, that's just a fact. Right, moving on to number three, Bruno Fernandez. Now. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people will go, but, you know, but Bruno Fernandes, though, you know, like, he's literally just come to the club. He's literally just come to the club. I mean, um, you know, why is he on the list? Why is he so high, you know, on the list as well? Um, to be honest, for me, his performance, um, his performance in, the, in his first game against Wolves, for me... That showed the potential of this guy. You know, it showed the potential of Bruno Fernandes. The fact that um, he was, you know, 
giving players orders, the fact that he's running to space, his passing ability, his free kick ability. You know, it's something that we just haven't seen from any Manchester United player for quite some time. And that's why he basically gets he's so high on this list. And hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll remain in this top 10 weekly list um, in days to come. But fingers crossed, you know, so because I think a lot of us, and we've seen, you know, the reason why this channel is where it is is because of this guy, because of the transfer speculation, because of this guy. Um, and I have high hopes of Bruno Fernandes. And if what I saw against Wolves anything to go by... Um, He's going to be key for Manchester United for the rest of the season. And hopefully against Chelsea, he'll be played further up in his actual position and not as a holding midfielder. Um, if Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, uh, is, is sensible. Um, but yeah, Bruno Fernandes to me holds this position at this moment in time. Um, and um, and he, he's... he's, he's just, like I said, just on that performance alone, yes, yes, he didn't score a goal. Yes, you know, it wasn't main and man of man match a performance, but it's still, to be honest, better than what I've seen from a lot of United players this season. And, and uh, fingers crossed, Bruno Fernandes steps up. Right, you probably you probably guess what number two and number not number one are, So, but it's, it's, it's be got to be between these two players. Um, and now wan for me is number two. Um, just... Um, the reality is, I know there have been a lot of United fans that are saying, oh, Aaron wan -Bissaka can't go forward, or Aaron wan -Bissaka, oh, Aaron wan -Bissaka, oh, Aaron wan -Bissaka, blah, 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 wan -Bissaka. you know, I'm going to The reality is that, and this is the thing about consistency, this is the thing about consistency, um, Aaron wan -Bissaka is consistent. He's never, like, he's maybe had maybe one or two bad games, if that, one or two bad games, but he is very, very consistent. And that is why he's number two on this list. He's number two on this list for his consistency. And he's consistently good. Consistently sixes, sevens. I would say sevens, I'd say. Consistently defending all the time. It's very difficult to get past this guy. That's why many teams seem to go down our left-hand side through the middle instead of the right. Um, unless he's doubled up upon. Even then, he's, he's, he generally comes out on top. Yes, his ability going forward could be much improved. But in even in like recent weeks, to be honest... With the amount of crosses he's been putting into the box, he could have had at least three or four assists had they been put away. You know, so his actual forward and crossing ability it is actually getting better. He is actually going up more. Um, so you know, without Alman Basaka, without Alman Basaka, let's be real, we would not even be with a sniff, a sniff of top four, and um, we'd be a lot further down the league. You know, than we are. Um, and hats off to him. I don't know where the criticism is coming from. Some United fans. Um, Yes, any player can be better, but this is his first season at Manchester United, um, and he's and he's and he's he's basically been a defensive powerhouse force, which is what we needed. Um, our defensive, our goals, there've been very few goals that have been because of Wamba Saka. Okay, he gave a penalty away, I think once, and um, but maybe twice. But I mean, that's 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 just it, you know. So um, you know, shout out to this guy and Wamba Saka because he is a beast, the Spider Man. The spider guy, you know, the just he's an animal. He's an absolute animal. Number one is Pastor Fred. Pastor Fred. Pastor Fred. So far, you know, especially with the injuries in our midfield, you know, with Matic being suspended at some time and not being in favour, Pastor Fred has really stepped up this season. I always said that there was a player in Fred. I've always said there was a player in Fred, but the reality is that for some reason. Um, Sony Mourinho and even um, even um, uh, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer didn't seem to rate Fred. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's just 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 how they were, but they didn't they didn't seem to play Fred. And I said multiple times Fred had potential when he played, but it's just that he kept on being in and out of the team. You know, play him consistently, and you'll get a good player. And it just so happens that with McTominay being injured, Pogba being injured, Fred has basically been our mainstay when it comes to our midfield. And he's Carter midfield. Yes, again, you know, compared to a lot of, um, compared to a lot of, um, you know, you no, know, it's how can I how can I put it this way? <coughs> you know, they're obviously better pr uh, Premier League midfielders than Fred. Okay, and yes, there've been many games where Fred um, has struggled, where he hasn't upped his game, but. He's been massively improved over, especially after the last couple, uh, last, last few weeks, when we really, really need him, given our injury crisis. And of course, everyone knows, and you can check the video on the channel. Um, 
these comments regarding Manchester United, these truthful comments about Manchester United and where we need to be. To be honest, guys, um, I don't think there was any doubt that Pastor Fred was going to be on, on top here. And let's see what happens um, in the next coming week. So, Pastor Fred, so far, is number one spot. So, guys, um, thanks for watching. So, that's Top 10 United Players Weekly. Say a 20-minute, 15, 20-minute show, weekly show um, for um, so reviewing the best, well, the Top 10 United Players um, for the following week. Obviously, we'll be doing another recorded episode um, next week after, um, or sometime during the week after the um, a Chelsea game. Um, some of these players might still be on the list. Some of these players might drop down the list. Some of these players might come off the list completely. Who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Um, do you agree with this list? Do you think there are players that I missed that should have been on the list? I know there are noticeable met absentees like Martial and uh, Maguire, who I didn't think really deserved, in my opinion, to be on this list. Um, let me know what you think. And obviously, come the Chelsea game, if you, if you have nominees and players that you want to be on the next next week's list based on the Chelsea game or playing on Monday, then let me know in the comments as well. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter, United X. Have a nice day, guys, and cheers.